So hello everyone, my name is Cheryl Hope Arenas from BSN 2A. So now we'll be tackling about the basic concepts in statistics. So first is what is statistics? So statistics is a branch of mathematics dealing with the collection, analysis, interpretation, and presentation of masses of numerical data. So when we say collection, so this is a process of gathering relevant information from the population. And then when we say analysis, we analyze the data we gathered. It is a process of deducing relevant information from the given data so the numerical data can be formulated. And the last process is interpretation. So this is the deriving conclusion from the data that we've been analyzed. It also involves making prediction or forecast about large group based on gathered data from the small group. This is also a collection of quantitative data. And now we have the basic terms and statistics. So first basic term we're going to learn is population. So when we refer population, we're talking about all the items of interest or this is the set of all the possible values of a variable. For example, a list of the ages of all 40 students in a particular class. So next is the sample, which includes some of the items in the population or this is a subgroup of a population. So for example, the data from a survey of 10 students in the same class asking their age. And we have the data. These are the values that the variables can consume. And next, we have the variable. So this is a characteristics that is observable or measurable in every unit of universe. And then we have the classification of variables. So we have the qualitative variables. So qualitative variable, also called a categorical variable. So it's a variable that isn't numerical. It describes data that fits into categories. So for example, eye colors, what it includes blue, green, brown, hazel, and then the states. So what it includes, the Florida, New Jersey, Washington, and then the dog breed. So we have, it includes Alaskan Malamute, German Shepherd, Siberian Husky, and Shih Tzu. Next, we have the quantitative variables. So quantitative variables are numerical variables. So counts, percent, or numbers. This is also called measurement variable or numerical variable. So for example, high school grade. Point average, for example, 4.0, 3.2, 2.1, and then number of pets owned. For example, you have 4, you have 2, you have 1, and how many cousins you have. So you have 12, 22, you have 0. And then now we're going to quantitative variable classified as, so we have two continuous variable and discrete variable. So first is continuous variable. So a continuous variable is defined as a variable which can take an uncountable set of values or infinite set of values. For example, height or weight of the students in a particular class. And then we have two types of continuous variable. We have the interval variable and ratio variable. So interval variable, this is a variable can be defined as the distance or level between each category that is equal and static. For example, what is the average day, time, temperature in the Philippines during summer? And then next, we have the ratio variable. So ratio variable is another type of continuous variable. This type of variable has only one variation from an interval variable. The only difference is that the ratio between the scores gives information regarding the relationship between the responses. And then we have the discrete variable. So discrete variable are countable in a finite amount of time. For example, number of students in a class, number of planets around the sun. So this is all countable. Now let's proceed to the level of measurement. So first we have the nominal level. So you can categorize your data by labeling them in mutually exclusive groups, but there is no order between the categories. For example, 
the gender, the ethnicity, the marital status. And then ordinal level. So you can categorize and rank your data in an order, but you cannot say anything about the intervals between the rankings. For example, highest educational attainment and the language ability. For example, are you a beginner, intermediate, or are you fluent? And then interval level. So you can categorize rank and infer equal intervals between neighboring data points, but there is no true zero point. For example, temperature in Fahrenheit and Celsius. And then test scores, for example, your IQ or exams. And last but not the least, in the level of measurement, we have the ratio level. So you can categorize rank and infer equal intervals between neighboring data points and there is a true zero point. For example, the height, the weight, the age. And now let's proceed to the four basic methods of sampling. So first, we have the simple random sampling. So in a simple random sampling, every member of the population has an equal chance of being selected. So your sample frame should include the whole population. So to conduct this type of sampling, you can use tools like random number generators or other techniques that are based entirely on chance. For example, you want to select simple random sample of 100 employees of company X. You assign a number to every employees and a company database from 1 to 1000 and use a random number generator to select 100 numbers. And next, we have the systematic sampling. So this is similar to simple random sampling but is usually slightly easier to conduct. So every member of the population is listed with a number but instead of randomly generating numbers, individuals are chosen at regular intervals. So for example, all employees of the company are listed in alphabetical order. From the first 10 numbers, you randomly select a starting point number six from number six onwards every 10 person on the list is selected so 6 16 26 36 and so on and you end up with a sample of 100 people and then we have the stratified sampling so it involves dividing the population into subpopulation that may differ in important ways so it allows you draw more precise conclusion by ensuring that every subgroup is properly represented in the sample so to use the sample method you divide this population into subgroups called the strata based on the relevant characteristic so for example, gender, age range, income bracket, job role. So based on the overall proportions of the population, you calculate how many people should be sampled from each subgroup. Then you use random or systematic sampling to select a sample from each subgroup. So for example, the company has 800 female employees and 200 male employees. You want to ensure that the sample reflects the gender balance of the company. So you sort the population into two strata based on gender. Then you use random sampling on each group, selecting 80 women and 20 men, which gives you a representative sample of 100 people. And lastly, we have the cluster sampling. This involves dividing the population into subgroups, but each subgroup should have similar characteristics to the whole sample. Instead of sampling individual from each subgroup, you randomly select entire subgroups. So if it is a practically possible, you might include every individual from each sample cluster. So if the clusters themselves are large, you can also sample individual from within each cluster using one of the technique above this is called multi-stage sampling so this method is good for dealing with large and disparate populations but there is more risk of error in the sample as there could be substantial differences between clusters so it's difficult to guarantee that the sampled clusters are really representative of the whole population so for example, the company has offices in 10 cities across the country, all with roughly the same number of employees and similar rules. 
So you don't have the capacity to travel to every offices to collect your data. So you use random sampling to select three offices. So these are your clusters.